All right, let's do some Lorentz transformation example problems. All right, spaceship A is traveling at a speed of 0.7 c in the plus x direction relative to the Earth. Spaceship B is traveling at a speed of 0.8 c, 0.8 c, 8.8 times the speed of light in the negative x direction relative to the Earth. How fast is spaceship B moving is measured by someone in spaceship A's reference frame. All right, so we're transforming into a reference frame moving at a velocity of 0.7 c. All right, the velocity of the spaceship we're measuring is in the negative x direction, it's negative point A C. All right, so spaceship B is moving in the negative x direction at a speed of point eight times the speed of light in the Earth reference frame. Now we want to transform in a reference frame moving at this velocity. So our Lorentz transformation equation is ux prime is ux minus v over one uh, plus ux, sorry, one minus ux v over c squared. And uh, so we just plug stuff into that equation now. So ux is negative 0.8c minus v, which is 0.7c. And we divide that by 1 minus ux, which is negative, negative 0.8c, times the velocity of our prime frame, 0.7c, all divided by c squared. We can cancel out the c's, all right? And I'll leave it to you to plug the numbers in. But just notice, if we use the Galilean transformation, we just have the numerator, right? Which would be bigger in magnitude than the speed of light. But the denominator saves us, all right? Another thing to, yeah, there you go. Another thing to note, of course, the units work and all the standard things we do to test things. If you got something bigger than the speed of light, you'd know there's a problem and so forth. Remember, when you work homework problems, to practice check, checking your answers without checking your answers, without going and asking what is the answer, or plugging it into the computer to see if you got the right answer. Do things to check your answers to make sure they make sense before you enter them. That's good practice for the test and for life. Okay, problem number two. Spaceship A is traveling at a speed of 0.7 c in the plus x direction relative to the Earth. Spaceship B is traveling at a speed of 0.8 c in the negative y direction relative to the Earth. How fast is spaceship B moving as measured by someone in the spaceship A's reference frame? Well, now we have two components of velocity, right? So now we have, we're transforming still into a frame that's moving at 0.7c. But now ux is equal to zero, but uy is equal to negative 0.8c, all right? So we have two components to worry about. So ux prime is ux minus v divided by one minus ux v over c squared. ux is zero, so this just turns out to be minus v, all right? So the spaceship had no x component of velocity, but because now we're moving in the, rel in the x direction, we see that ship moving backwards in the x direction at the same velocity. The y component is just uy divided by, remember the equation, it was gamma 1 minus ux v over c squared, all right? Again, ux is zero, so this thing doesn't matter, and we just have uy over gamma, all right? Which means the total magnitude of the velocity is the square root of ux prime squared plus uy prime squared, Pythagorean's theorem, right? Which is just v squared plus uy squared over gamma squared. And of course, uh, this is v squared plus uy squared. And one over gamma squared is just one minus v squared over c squared, all right? And we have v we know you why, I'll let you plug that in once again and get your numbers. If you get something bigger than the speed of light, you know you've got trouble. Once again, checking our work. If we transform into a frame moving faster, that gives us a bigger x component of velocity. That makes sense, right? So our total velocity should get bigger, right? And if the initial velocity in the y direction is bigger, you expect to get a bigger uh, magnitude of velocity in the transform frame as well. Anyway. Moving on to the next problem. A deep space probe is traveling at a velocity v away from the Earth. When it is a distance d from the Earth, as measured in the Earth reference frame, it sends a radio signal back to Earth. In the reference frame of the probe, how long will it take for the signal to reach Earth? All right, there's several ways you can work this. All right, one way we could do this is we could say, look, this deep space probe, let's imagine that there happens to be some, media, some asteroid or something right next to it. When it, that's at rest with respect to the Earth when it sends its signal out, all right? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, look, there's this distance between the Earth and the asteroid. In the Earth reference frame, we measure the proper length for that, right? Because the asteroid is at rest with respect to the Earth. So we're imagining, let's imagine there's an asteroid right by the probe when it sent out the signal, and this asteroid is at rest with respect to the Earth. So in this case, the d, the distance as measured in the Earth frame, is also the distance out to the asteroid measured in the Earth frame, which is the proper length for that distance from the Earth to the asteroid. The probe, however, is going to see a length contracted distance from the Earth to the asteroid, and that distance is going to be 1 over gamma times the proper length, right? We have that equation from the book. And so then we can say, well, look, the, according to the probe, when it sends the signal, the Earth is actually that far away, all right? So this is 1 over gamma. The proper length is the length measured by the Earth. And so we can say the probe actually sees that it has to send a signal that distance, all right? And so how long does it take to send it that distance? Well, it's going to be distance divided by velocity, right? Oh, here's another catch, though. In the probe's reference frame, the Earth is moving away from the probe. So while the signal is traveling at some velocity v towards the Earth, the Earth is moving away at velocity v. If the Earth sees the probe moving away at velocity v, the probe sees the Earth moving away at velocity v. So that will tell me how long it takes. The effective speed of the message, right, how fast the message closes on the Earth, is the speed of the message divided by, or minus how fast the Earth is moving away from the probe. So we just plug this in for L, L is d over gamma, and then we put that in there, and there is our answer. That's how long it takes the signal to reach the Earth in the probe's reference frame. All right? Um, now, just to make things look kind of tidy, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to take, I'm going to pull a C out of here, so it'll be lambda or d over gamma c times 1 minus v over c, because we like 1 minus v over c, whatever. That's just another way of writing the same thing. All right, so it turns out that is the right answer, but there's another way we could have worked this problem. Instead of having an asteroid at rest with the Earth next to the probe when it sends the message, what if instead, here's the Earth over here, and here's our probe moving away. What if there was an asteroid moving at the same velocity of the probe, that's right over the Earth when it sends the message. And then we're going to say, oh, look, this distance right here is, is the proper distance when measured by the probe. So the probe's measuring the proper distance, but the distance from the Earth to the probe in the Earth's reference frame is not the proper distance. So we're going to say L is 1 over gamma probe, but now the distance as measured in the Earth reference frame is the uh, length contracted distance, right? So that tells us then that the distance that the probe measures between the Earth, between itself and the asteroid. It's the proper length, which is going to be gamma times d. And then we say, oh, how long is it going to take? Well, the probe sees the Earth this distance away, right? And it, the signal travels at speed c, but the Earth's moving away at a velocity v. And now we get, well, this is gamma times d over c minus v. And this is different from what we saw before. Right before, we had the gamma in the denominator. Turns out this is wrong. All right, it seems totally legit, doesn't it? But it's wrong. The reason that it's wrong is because, yes, the distance from the asteroid to the probe, the probe does measure the proper length for that, and the Earth will measure a length contracted version of that. But remember, time is relative. So if the probe sees this asteroid being right here by the Earth, right when it sends its message, the Earth doesn't see the asteroid right there. In fact, the asteroid's over here, and there's some other object here right where the Earth is um, when the probe sends its signal in the Earth reference frame. So the problem here is that time and position are all relative, and when the probe sends the signal, the probe sees this asteroid as being right over the Earth, all right? But um, that distance, if I, if I do this length contraction thing, the distance I find there is not d, because the Earth, in the Earth's reference frame, the asteroid is over here when the probe sends the signal, all right? So this is all very, this has probably got you pretty confused, right? Probably both methods hopefully made some sense, but now you're wondering, why does this one work and this one doesn't? Well, this is the beauty of Lorentz transformations. It's really great if you can get an intuitive feel for relativity, but relativity is a little bit bizarre, and it can be hard to get that intuitive viewpoint sometimes. So the Lorentz transformations to the rescue. With the Lorentz transformations, you can kind of blindly do things without thinking as hard. So let's do this. Let's imagine that I'm just going to do things in the Earth reference frame 
and I've got two events, the signal being sent and the signal being received, I just have to use Lorentz transformations to transform those into the probe's reference frame. All right. Now, one obvious choice would be to say, well, let's say I've got the probe going right here, and uh, the probe, right, we want are the origins of our coordinate systems to overlap at time t equals zero. So um, when the probe is out here, that's going to be sometime after time t equals zero when we uh, you know, synchronize our coordinate systems. That's one way to do it, but there's actually an easier way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say at time t equals zero, that's when the probe sends a signal. That'll make life simpler. All that means is that the Earth's reference frame is right here at time t equals zero. The probe, right, the probe's out here, but it's okay. It can measure things with respect to a reference frame that is over the Earth at time t equals zero. So they're right, actually right on top of each other at time t equals zero. But then as time goes forward, the probe's reference frame is going to move along with the probe, but separated by this distance d. All right, so that makes life a little simpler. So then what we're going to do is we're going to say when the, when the signal is sent in the, in the Earth's reference frame, that happens at a position d and at a time t equals zero. So we're going to define time t equals zero to be when the, the signal is sent. When the signal is received in the Earth reference frame, that happens at the Earth, at the origin zero, and that happens at a time which is the distance the probe was away divided by how fast the signal traveled. All right. So now we just have to transform these two times into the probe's reference frame. So the time when the signal was sent, that's just gamma t1 minus vx1 over d. All right, And t1 is 0, but x1 is d. So this is just going to be minus gamma, sorry, that's c squared. That's going to be minus gamma vd over c squared. vd over c squared. All right? OK. Any troubles with that? OK, now we need to transform the time that the signal was received. And that is just going to be gamma time 2 minus vx2 over c squared. Now it's the x that's 0, but time 2 is d over c. So this is just going to be gamma d over c. All right. So the time that it takes for the signal to reach the Earth in the probe's reference frame is just t2 prime minus t1 prime. Before I calculate that, I'm going to mention, OK, in the probe's reference time frame, it sends the signal at negative time. That's OK. I mean, there's nothing wrong with negative time. That just means that in the, probe, in the Earth's reference frame, we're synchronizing our reference frames uh, right as the signal is sent. But in the probe's reference frame, we, syn we synchronized before the signal was sent because the signal was sent way over here, not at the origin of our reference frame. And the Lorentz transformations mess up time and space. All right, they, you just have to be comfortable that they're true, and it's okay that the signal was sent at some negative time. All right, because the time the signal was sent in the Earth frame is not the same as the time it was sent in the probe's frame. That's all that means. All right, if we subtract these two together, it's going to be gamma d over c. This has a d over c in it, right? Times one. And I subtract a negative, so it's going to be plus. I pulled out my gamma d over c plus v over c. All right, so this is what we get. Gamma d over c times 1 minus v over c. And what we got before was something different. All right, but it turns out these, what we got in this one and what we got here are the same. You can show it just by writing out your gamma as a square root and manipulating things. You can show that they're the same. Or you can plug in a bunch of numbers and prove to yourself that they're the same. But the whole point of this was we had two different ways to work this problem that seemed logical. One of them worked, one of them didn't. But the reason it didn't work was very subtle and could really easily mess you up. The brute force approach is just do things in the Earth reference frame that you understand, and then use the Lorentz transformations to transform what happened in the Earth frame into the probes frame. And you don't even have to think about it. You get the right answer. You're less likely to make a mistake. We can also sort of check our answers here, though, too. Um, if the, I mean, there's a few things here. The units work out. If the distance was bigger when it was sent, then it ought to take more time, and it does, right? Um, kind of hard to uh, do much more. It's kind of complicated, but there's our answer, and I'm sticking to it. So there you go.